This week's playwright tip, know how to write a good blurb. Because your marketing is going to be hell if you can't describe your show in the length of a tweet. Today I am off paint shopping. Yay! Shopping, spending more money that we don't have. Woot. So this week, I... Hold on, you know what? I actually have to talk about the blurb more because a lot of playwrights have come up to me and asked me how to write a good blurb, and he, here's the basics of how to write that. Now, a blurb is the 30 to 40 word short description of what your show is about. Some people call it a slug line, some people call it a marketing line, um, most people call it the blurb. Now, you have to have the general information about your show in the blurb, and the simpler it is, and the more understandable it is, and the more engaging it is, the better. So, for example, uh, if you were to describe Romeo and Juliet, you could say that it's this sweeping love story and tragedy about uh, the Montagues and the Capulets fighting against each other, and Romeo Montague then go, sneaks into a party uh, held by uh, held by the Capulets and falls in love with uh, Juliet, yada yada, so forth and so on. I just gave you a description that seems a little long-winded and um, doesn't stick in your head completely. However... If you make the blurb for that show really small, for example, uh, two teenagers from rival families fall in love, you have everything you need to engage the audience. Because if you have two people falling in love from two rival families, will they come together? Will they not? I don't know. That's the question that has to go in the audience's head. Now, for another example, if you want to make a really short synopsis of Hamlet, and I've tried this a number of times and I finally figured out how to do it, the blurb for Hamlet would be, a uh, prince avenges father's death after uncle marries his mother. I think it's an engaging one. It shows a lot of tension. There you go. A good blurb is basically broken down to three parts. There's the hook, there's the plot, and then there's the engagement. Other people have different names for it. Um, this is just what I call it. Now, the hook is basically the first couple of words that gets the audience involved. I'm going to use uh, my show going up Manhattan Rep this June as an example. A inner ordained minister. There's your hook. The hook is internet ordained minister because it gets people thinking, wait a minute, is an internet ordained minister a real priest? You know, they can perform weddings, but can they do other things? Thoughts go into the head. So going on, an internet ordained minister is asked to give his suicidal neighbor last rites. Asked to give his suicidal neighbor last rites. All of a sudden, there's the plot line right there. So then there's the last part. The full blurb is, when an internet ordained minister is asked to give his suicidal neighbor last rites, he has to find a way to save him and fight his own demons as well. So having to find a way to save him, all of a sudden you have the tension. You want to see if he has the ability to save him, keep him from getting being suicidal, and fight his own demons as well. Ooh, there's something else. There's another level going on here. All of a sudden you have the audience more interested in what your play is about. There's more than what's in the blurb going on, and you want the audience to see more of that. If any writers out there uh, want more details on how to write a good blurb, fire me a message. There's the email. Yay. So one of the things I had to do this week was to write a blurb for my show going up at the Fringe. Um, usually when I write a play, I actually start with the blurb. Most writers write their play, get their ideas on paper, and then try to figure out how to describe this play in uh, 30 words or less. I actually start with the blurb most times. The reason I do this is because, well, if I can't write a blurb that's interesting to me, how am I going to write a blurb that's going to be interesting to other people? And does this blurb make me want to know more? And since I'm the writer and since I created this blurb, I can create that more. See how that works? I'm kind of working backwards, but it gives me something. We have to turn on a blurb and all of our basic information over into the fringe. All of that's in. The blurb for the girl with the hands in the sand is, after the death of her mother, there's your hook, a young artist on the verge of personal and financial collapse uh, becomes obsessed with her work. There's your plot line. Here's the engagement. But what happens when the paint starts to run dry and reality starts to set in? Ooh, dun dun dun! So this week I also went into the city to see a series of one acts written by my director, Michael Hagens. Hello, Michael. Hey, John. How are we doing? I'm doing good. How are you? You're looking good. Thank you. Appreciate looking it. Looking very dapper. I dress up every opening night. No matter what, I, what I'm working on, every night I dress up. I wear Converse sneakers. <laughs> it's superstition. Theater is big on superstition now. Absolutely. It was called The Night of Confinement, and it was just four short one acts, and it was actually really good. The clapping's good, but come on, these are comedies. Hello, everyone! Woo! There we go. 
I think it's smart for other playwrights to see other playwrights work or to read other playwrights work. You get a sense of what other people are capable of, especially since, you know, he's going to be my director. I want to know what his sensibilities as a writer are, and he's a good fit for this play, by the way, just saying. And you also want to see, you know, what you can pull off. Now, what I saw in these 1X is because uh, Michael's a siege combat guy, uh, I saw a lot of physicality uh, performed on stage, and it made me think, hmm, I write a lot of plays where it's people talking in a room. How could, the, how could the stuff I write be a little more physical? It got me thinking about that. And that's going to be Michael's job with this play, and hopefully some of that stuff is in there. In the meanwhile, I'm doing a lot of writing and rewriting and trying to do a lot of producing things. I was still missing one member of our producing team. That's the ACR, Authorized Company Representative. Hopefully we'll find them next week. And, um, yeah, it's coming together. Uh, next week I have to do recordings for Kyle Warday, and um, we're going to have our first read of the Fringe show coming up soon. Lots of show things going on. Tons of fun.